cute anime girl commented that Julius Avola was the OG fascist mystic dude. And we've talked about, um, and, and Alan Piper actually in the strange Nazis interview that, that Pace yeah. and Piper did, um, there's some really good discussion about, um, Evola and some psychedelic press or psychedelic adjacent people who translated some of his writings, if I'm remembering mm -hmm. correctly. Yeah, that's correct. And I mean, e Evola was, you know, an occultist who um, he, you know, he laid the groundwork for a lot of fascist philosophy. Um, and he was, you know, a, an early experimenter with his own consciousness, uh, but was very much, you know, somebody who was in the, the might makes right kind of uh, world. And, um, and incidentally, he's, uh, he's uh, Steve Bannon's, uh, you know, sort of go-to philosopher for how to take back the West. Um, so, I mean, in these ways, these, these fringe ideas, these ideologies that, um, like, believe me, I, I would love to have spent, you know, the last couple of years of my life thinking about something more friendly, but it's, it's like, it's to the point where it needs, it needs some reply. And that's something that I think that we felt we needed to do to the Castilia material um, without, you know, giving it a platform um, without sort of just sharing it on social media and saying, LOL, what's this? Um, because there, there are a lot, I mean, you know, like that's definitely a first impulse, but it, it, there's a lot to sort of untangle and explicate. And I mean, the, I really got a shout out to, to Russ for, um, you know, helping us peek behind the curtain um, and see, see that, see, see where some of this came from. So cool. Yeah. And, and along the lines of, of where some of this has come from, you know, there's an interesting uh, prompt, I'll say, in the chat from Luke, where it says, it seems to me that just like Obama era neoliberalism led to Trump, recent Polonesque neoliberal psychedelia has opened up a space for all this psychedelic fascism. Um, and I think that's an interesting comparison to make. I think there's also questions, too, of like, in the context of mainstreaming and as people can almost taste it right on the oh we're almost there you know now that we've got you know billion dollar corporate engagement here and we're if maps doesn't get across the finish line you know at least one of these corporations will and then that'll be our trojan horse into psychedelics for everyone through you know even if it has to be medicalized and this notion that like we saw when we published various pieces of the angeli story that um you know, oh, you guys, you're going to make psychedelics look bad, you know, and, and it's the same sort of trope that we've seen used, whether trying to discuss psychedelic fascism or trying to discuss um, survivors and victims of, of psychedelic therapist abuse, where it's like, you can't talk about this because if people realize that there are these sketchy things going on around psychedelia, it's going to harm our chances of getting mainstream acceptance. But if mainstream acceptance requires sweeping all of this under the rug, putting the skeletons in the closet, and not acknowledging that there are real unfolding problems of abuse on a variety of fronts, you know, personally, the notion of, of protecting the, the field at the cost of all of these harms to all of these people. Um, and the notion that like, as somebody who has been targeted with, uh, you know, by fascists, by white supremacists, who's dealt with anti-Semitism throughout my life, you know, the notion that like, I need to shut up about that for the good of psychedelia just doesn't hold for me. I mean, it's a pretty cold utilitarian calculation. I mean, these people would, would contend that, um, you know, all of the things that you just talked about in, at, at the end when we tally up all of the healing uh, versus all of the harm, um, that getting the medicine to as many people as possible under, you know, standard FDA uh, protocols is, you know, it, look, it's going to come out in the wash, man. Just, just sit tight. Yeah, it's just a little collateral damage. And I, I don't know, I think we can, I think we can talk about it along the way. And I think that we've already seen certain policy um, solutions at a local ground up, uh, not top down level um, that have provided access. And, um, you know, I think that's a good thing. Um, with regard to some of, uh, you know, the questions about whether that increases demand, I mean, guess what? We have we have more problems than um, than just the drug war. Um, don't get me wrong; the drug war is a big one, but uh, we live in 
in late capitalism and uh, a pandemic and, and climate change. We, we have to do many things at once if we are to, um, you know, leave, a, leave the world a better place. Or even secure, like, hope for any sort of, of human future. Not, not to get too bleak, but, you know. Yeah, sure. um, and when we look at issues of, of cartel and we look at, like, indigenous populations growing uh, plants that, that become drugs, you know, and, and all of this, like, we, we see there are huge issues of supply chains and global capitalism. And, you know, if, if we can't engage on multiple fronts at the same time, we're in, you know, deep shit. Right. Um, but, you know, psychedelics are supposed to be multidisciplinary. They're supposed to open your mind and dissolve boundaries and uh, turn us all into soul siblings uh, holding hands. And so, you know, if any of that's true or how about this, if we think that's desirable, um, there's a word for that on the left. It's called solidarity. You know, it means that we help each other and we try and build a better world uh, together. So I'm, I'm for that. You're here. Thank you.